Balloon 83 Landing and Recovery. Refueling, my fellow aviators, constitutes a crucial chapter in our post flight endeavors. It's a symphony of procedures that demands our unwavering attention, and many among us, seasoned pilots, choose to embark on this task promptly after a flight. This practice, my colleagues, is not just a matter of habit, it's a strategic move to streamline preparations for the journeys that lie ahead. Now, each balloon, my dear aviators, is bestowed with its unique set of refueling procedures. These, my esteemed colleagues, can be unearthed in the sacred text known as the flight manual. Picture this. Connecting a supply line to the balloon's fuel lines, orchestrating the opening of the refueling tank's main valve, and activating the fixed liquid level gauge, affectionately known as the spit valve, on the corresponding fuel tank nestled in the balloon basket. Now, here's the PS de resistance. Shut off the main tank valve, close the spit valve, cease the main supply line, and bleed the lines. Follow the procedure in the balloon's flight manual, for these are the sacred scrolls that guide our every move. But, my aviator companions, let us not be remiss in our acknowledgement of safety during this delicate ballet of propane transfer. Propane vapor, you see, is a creature of great volatility and, under certain cosmic alignments, can unleash its explosive temperament. Engrave in aeronautical consciousness, no smoking near the balloon during refueling. Refuel outside the sacred basket, disable strikers, silence electronics, beware synthetic fabrics. Custodians in loose gloves, never refuel in closed trailers or van sanctums. The vapor, heavier than the air we breathe, can accumulate, creating a volatile concoction. Let the basket breathe in open air. For additional pearls of safety wisdom, seek counsel from your propane supplier or consult the sacred text, Hot Air Balloon Crewing Essentials. And now, my esteemed colleagues, after the dance with the propane spirits, comes the moment of introspection, the logging of flight time. This, my dear aviators, is a rite of passage that occurs sometime after the flight, a necessary act of penance where entries in the personal logbook and the aircraft's logbook become etched in the annals of our aeronautical journey. Behold the accepted practice, my fellow sojourners, where flight time is inscribed in tenths of an hour, embracing the elegant increments of six minutes, rounding up the remaining minutes. Let not this task be relegated to the whims of chance but follow the sacred provisions of 14 CFR section 61.51. A simple task, you say? Ah. But within its simplicity lies the intricacies of solo time, pilot in command, pick, time, and instruction time, the definitions of which are enshrined in the sacred scrolls. Delve into section 61.51 my dear aviators, and should the mists of confusion descend, seek the wisdom of the local flight standards district office, FSDO, for elucidation. Now, my fellow enthusiasts, flight time in a balloon is an ethereal concept, a dance with time that commences when the balloon first embraces its buoyant destiny and concludes when it gracefully bows out, deflated yet triumphant. Burner activation on inflation mirrors the grandeur of an engine start in the aviation pantheon. Behold, for the aircraft logbooks or maintenance records are the custodians of aircraft time, not mere repositories for passenger names and flight anecdotes. But heed this, my companions in the skies, for there exists a deviation from the righteous path, a faction of pilots who, for reasons unbeknownst to us, shun the recording of aircraft time while tethered. A grave error, you say? Indeed, a balloon on tether is in flight, ensconced in the wings of Part 91 provisions. Let every inflated moment of a certified balloon find its place in the sacred maintenance records, ensuring the timely observance of inspection rituals. Now, let us turn our gaze to the sacred code of crew responsibilities. The sagacious theory that graces our aeronautical scriptures suggests that if a pilot cannot land a balloon without aid, perhaps the time for flight has not yet arrived. Contemplate, my friends, the scenario where the celestial dance reaches its denouement sands the comforting presence of the chase crew. A pilot, then, must be prepared to alight without the supporting hands of ground-bound comrades. In this realm, my esteemed companions, opinions diverge, a schism of thought where some assert that crew attendance is a dispensable luxury. Their reasoning, though formidable, posits that crew absence is often an inevitable circumstance, tainted by the hues of traffic, errant turns, and the capricious decisions of pilots to descend prematurely or soar higher. With no formal training, they argue, enthusiastic crew might inadvertently disrupt the delicate ballet of landing. Yet, my compatriots, there exists another faction, champions of crew presence during the denouement of our airborne sonatas. 
In the grand tapestry of aviation, where takeoff and landing are the magnum opus, landing emerges as the undisputed crescendo. The majority of ballooning mishaps, they argue, unfurl their wings during the sacred act of landing. Winds, those mischievous sprites, can alter their tempo with capricious delight. Crew, stationed on terra firma, become the heralds of wind wisdom, guiding pilots through the labyrinth of surface currents. As the balloon descends to embrace the earth, it tiptoes perilously close to power lines, trees, and the terrestrial realm. Here, my friends, the proximity of crew becomes a shield against potential tribulations. Crew, with eyes on the ground, are the sentinels who spot hidden obstacles, ensuring a safe descent into the waiting arms of Mother Earth. And behold, for crew are the arbiters of landing site quality, discerning nuances that escape the aeronaut's lofty gaze. A patch of land that appears idyllic from the heavens may harbor unforeseen perils, livestock gathered under a tree, standing water, a nascent crop, or a deflating balloon from a bygone voyage. The crew, keen observers of the terrestrial stage, unearthed these truths. In the twilight of the flight, the crew takes on the mantle of ambassadors, seeking the blessings of landowners, negotiating the terms of a terrestrial dalliance. A diligent crew, my friends, is a beacon of safety in the last throes of our celestial sojourn. And here, in the finale of our aeronautical opera, we confront the essence of crew-assisted landings. Some pilots may shudder at the thought, finding solace in the solitude of unassisted landings. Yet, my companions, let it be known that crew-assisted landings, a dance between pilot and ground-bound comrades, unfold with regularity. This symbiotic relationship, my friends, has the power to transcend regulations, equipment, and techniques. A well-prepared crew, a squadron of trained hands ready for myriad scenarios, becomes the linchpin of safety. In the grand tapestry of ballooning wisdom, my fellow aeronauts, the adage echoes, takeoffs are optional, landings are mandatory. With this, we draw the curtain on our discourse, a lecture in the sacred halls of ballooning knowledge. May your landings be as graceful as a waltz, your crew as steadfast as the northern star.